Peace, shine family. It's Kyle King here on another lesson, lesson six, about building a winning team. Now, this is the most important lesson to me because if you look at any organization, sports team, empire, the key is building effective strategies to be able to lead, manage, and inspire your team to change. And I read a book um, a few years ago by Simon Sinek, Start With Why, and it talked about, it was, the, it was these circles, right? It was these circles. So it talked about boom, boom, boom. And then it was this. So a lot of times you want your team to have like the what? Like what do you do? And then it's kind of like the how do we do it? But I want you to get into the mindset of the why. Like why do we do what we do? You have to be able to inspire your team to change. And this lesson, the overall objective is this, of this lesson is to give you the tips, the tricks, and the strategies for you to effectively manage, develop, uh, systemat systematically scale, lead, and inspire your team to change. It's not just about um, piecing everyone together. It's a process that how do you know what you need? How do you know? See, let's, let's talk about that first. Team building is not based upon this. That is a no -no. Team building is based upon this. The first step, in my opinion, is you have to get into the mindset of being an expert at hiring experts. What I mean by that is not you just started a business, you just started an organization, you just started a team, and you want to get a whole bunch of people to, to fill spots and to fill bodies or to be your camp counselors for your summer program. You want to be able to hire based upon a skill set. That's like a college coach going out and they say they need a big man, so they're going out in the community and they're finding all of the tall people. They're finding the tallest people, or they say they need a, um, a shooting guard and they're finding all of the people that have made two shots on the basketball court. That is not effective strategies to building a winning team, but what is an effective strategy is you finding these people that have skill sets. You find, find, finding these people that are experts. You finding these people that have either experience. These are the keys. Experience, expertise, skill sets. This, this, this is it. These are the step, that I would say that is step one. Step two, in my opinion, is you have to define, uh, like you have to, d stop playing the guessing game. Don't play the guessing game. A lot of times in organizations, you can't effectively bring personnel in because you don't have the necessary processes, you don't have the necessary systems, you don't understand the overall expectations of your organization. A lot of times when I was starting as an entrepreneur, starting even as a player at times, either the coach didn't clearly define the expectations that I needed to, um, to instill, or I wasn't instilling or communicating effectively or being direct and straight to the people, to the employees, to the team members of my organization and then they're doing things that didn't align with my expectations. They're crossing boundaries. They're being disrespectful in my ideologies, but they never were given the necessary tools, the necessary uh, step strategies. They were never communicated effect effectively to the point where they did not know what I expected. So I think that's just, um, that's like the first date. You know what I mean? This is the first date. On the first date, you're gonna ask someone, Hey, you know, what do you expect of me? What are your expectations? The, based upon previous relationships, this is what I'm not going to tolerate. This is what I'm not going to take. This is what I would like. This is what I would not like. These are my expectations. What does a win look like to you? What does a successful relationship look like to you? And the next step in my, in my ideology would be aligning people in action and in overall aligning people and expertise. If you knew that you needed certain people in your organization to fit within your system, and we talked about company culture earlier, if you needed people to fit within a system, you don't need all of the best people. 
It's not that you need an organization, a team full of all-stars. You just maybe need one all-star and a, and, a, and a collective group of people around that all-star to give that all-star what they need to be successful. LeBron James doesn't really need a lot of all-stars. He needs a bunch of role players around him to fit within the system. Some teams need systems for them to bring role players together to fit within that system. That's why Coach K is a dominant coach. That's why John Wooden was a dominant coach. That's why Phil Jackson is a dominant coach. Bill Belichick is a dominant coach. They may have had one or two or three all-stars, but collectively in this company culture, in this system, they figured out a way, they figured out a strategy, they figured out a methodology for people to go on this first date. These are the expectations, these are the ideologies, these are the boundaries that don't get crossed. And I guarantee you, if you follow this strategy, we will win as an organization. We will win. You have to understand what is necessary. What is necessary for your team to win? Do we need a point guard? Do we need a shooting guard? Do we need a, a digital marketer? Do we need a human resources? Do I need an assistant to book my speaking engagements? All of these different things are so critical, so key for you to build an all-star organization. That is very important. Step number two, I think, so a question that I like to ask before I even get into step number two, and what's, what's powerful about team building is one word. Accountability. When you are setting expectations, when you are allowing people and empowering people to change, when you are inspiring people, it holds them more accountable for their actions, for their decisions, and for the things that they do within your organization or outside of your organization. See, a lot of people are only held accountable for the things that happen within an organization. But I have friends, I have colleagues, and I have people that I've worked with that have been fired, have been let go from companies, and have been removed from board of directors of companies that they have started, that they legally filed because of things that were happening outside of the organization, things that were posted on social media. You need to check your team in terms of social media, in terms of the things that happen within this organization. When people come in, how am I greeting my organization? Or how am I greeting people? If people are in the lobby, what are the things that we need to wear? What are All of these different things are important. Now we're gonna talk about that more, we're gonna do a deep dive in proper hiring and onboarding the later course. But in terms of building a team and that expectation process, how are you holding your team accountable? One question that I like to ask that you can begin to start asking your people is if this was your organization, how would you handle this situation? How would you handle this situation if this was your organization? Would you be coming late if this was your organization? Would you be disrespecting your staff if this was your organization? Would you be gossiping or would you want people to gossip if this was your organization? Would you be procrastinating and lying about meeting deadlines or not meeting deadlines if this was your organization? Would you continue to drop the ball if this was your organization? All of these different things. I'm gonna say it like this. You have to hold people so accountable and look at it like this. Let's, let's use that bait, the, the ball idea. Let's say, you have a baby. And if you do have a baby, you can really feel me because I'm a father myself. If you had a babysitter that you hired and they dropped your baby on the head, how many times would they need to drop your baby, your baby, your pride and joy on the head before you either fire, report, or get this person arrested? How many times do people have to continue to drop the ball within your organization with the thing that you started, you birthed, you envisioned, you worked, until you have to remove them from that organization, from that team, from that group, from that project. What is your offboarding process? Yes, you have to be an expert at hiring experts. Yes, you have to be a, 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 an expert at vetting people. Yes, you have to hire people that are qualified and that have skill sets. But what if people don't align with those skill sets? What are the expectations that you're setting with people if they continue to drop the baby, continue to drop the ball? What if the ball goes flat? Because if you continue to drop a ball, it's, it's, it's going to end up losing the inflation. So how do you handle situations like that when the ball loses the inflation, when the baby goes brain dead, when your business goes bankrupt? 
if you continue to have people on your team that are dropping the baby, please, people, stop dropping the baby. Stop hiring people that are dropping the baby. Next step, you have to define, define, how do I have here? The cult, oh, the culture. And when we talk about culture, there's three keys. These are the keys of culture. What do I have? Collaborate. I used to have one that said collaborate, innovate, cultivate. But collaborate, uh, I, I want to put win. That's what I'm going to put. And then think in action. But I'm going to say win, and we're going to put win-win. And the reason why I put win-win, because in business, in organizations, in, in sports, I don't care what lane you're in, winning is not everything. I'm going to be honest with you. I agree with you when we, we, we say that winning isn't everything. But I disagree at the same time because winning is the only thing. Why do we keep score if we don't want to win? Why do we have performance reviews if it's not about winning? Why do we have salaries if it's not about winning? Why do I make more and you make less if it's not about winning? Okay, we would all be paid the same. It's all about fairness. It's not about fairness, it's about performance. It's not about chances, it's about contribution. I'm gonna tell you this, I could care less about the people that were recruited to play at these great universities for basketball and for football, or these athletes that did not contribute and they got kicked off the team because you lost your chance when you took this opportunity. The chance was you playing in high school and you going through the recruiting process and you going on the visits and then paying for your dorms and paying for your schools and little Johnny making it to college. The contribution started when you signed on the dotted line. Stop giving people so many chances and start assessing and, 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 and revising and reviewing the contribution that they're making within your organization. That's what it's about. But what it's about is collaboration. How does this person fit within the system that you've created? It's not about bringing in all-stars. It's about fitting within the organization. The Fab Five lost. They never won a championship because it's not... They weren't collaborating. Carmelo Anthony can't get to a championship. Certain all-star teams and all-star players can't win big championships. It's not about winning games. It's about winning championships. It's about winning rings. Sometimes it's not always about having the all-star player. It's about having the all-star position that can be an all-star in the system that you have created as a part of your company culture and it's about having people that align and winning. I had a coach tell me one time that it's not about winning guys, it's just about getting you guys to college. And I look back at that coach and I said, sir, this isn't the right team for me because I'm not here to get to college. I'm here to win games and let those games and let my performance and let my skill set and let my grades then get me to college. I don't need you to focus on my college. I appreciate it, but I need you to help me win these games so I can win championships. Sometimes winning isn't in the form of games or a match. Sometimes winning is, hey guys, we're gonna, the win looks like we're gonna meet this deadline. The win looks like we're gonna get a new client. The win looks like we're gonna open up a new facility. The win looks like we're just gonna continue to have that collaboration as a team and not have any challenges or have great performance reviews or have 100% um, on our surveys that we um, that we that people fill out for us that may be a win So as as you're building a team, I need you to create. What is a win? What does the win look like? What is a win? What is the ideal win for your organization? Is it about revenue? Is it about operations? Is it about? Um, logistics is it about team development. Is it about training? What does that look like in a school winning may be hiring great teachers retaining students Winnings may be having your um, CCPR scores that are high at your, at your school. Winning may be our, our students are testing higher than anyone in the country. It may look different. And I think that's the issue with some board of directors and leaders of organizations or principals is that the principal may have one um, idea of winning and then the board, the people over the principal may have another and then it looks like this person hasn't met their expectation but they're winning in their mind and you're losing in your mind 
You got to have the, that's why the second step that we talked about was those clear expectations and being direct and clear. It's about winning. And then you have to have people that think in action. I didn't say think. I said think in action. I didn't say just um, bring me a bunch of your problems. I said bring me a bunch of your solutions. Have you, look, we're going to have a, a real conversation right now. Have you just been somewhere and you ask someone, hey, I, I, how are you doing? They say, oh, awful. Awful. I just got fired from a job. My life, my wife just left me. My kids are strung out on drugs. I'm just awful. Whoa. And then it just makes you like just feel dirty. Like you just forgot to put deodorant on this morning. That is awful. You don't want people in your organization that are problem oriented. And we will talk about the barriers in, later in this lesson. You want people that think of solutions in action. I, I, Empower my staff and I empower them by asking one question. I need you to figure, well, not really a question. I say to them, can you, or a question actually, can you figure out the solution to this problem? Before you bring me the problem, I need you to go for 30 to 40 minutes and figure out a potential solution and then let's talk through the solution together. And let me know what resources that you potentially may need to figure out the solution. You know what I did? I empowered them. You know what I did? I inspired them because now they feel as if they're leading their own solution. That's next step. I need you to get into the mindset because this is really all entrepreneurship is. All entrepreneurship is as a whole. This is you. This is a barrier. And this is the bag. The success. Those bonuses. That ring, right? It could even be that ring. On your, on, your, on your finger as, as, as a wedding ring. But what I'm saying is you don't want people that create more of these. You don't want people that create more barriers. You want people on your organization that break the barriers by what? Solving problems. I need you to start empowering your, your staff to change. How can we collectively solve problems? And I want you to ask this question when you're interviewing people. I don't want you to tell me a time those behavioral questions, just throw all of those out of the window. I need you to walk, when, when a problem arises, can you walk me through your strategy to solving the problem? If that person looks at you like this, don't even bring them on board. If that person looks at you like this, don't even bring them on board. But if that person gives you an honest answer, an answer that they really walk you through the process of how they solve problems, they walk you through the process of you know, they give you examples. That is a person that you would like because that person can help take this type of barrier and get you to these types of successes. These types of successes. It's about breaking barriers and getting to the successes. And how I have it here is it's about really juggling your priorities, right? I think activity doesn't equal achievement, people. Just because you're doing a lot doesn't mean your, your business is thriving. Just because you're doing a lot does not mean you're, you're achieving your goals. Just because you got a lot going on doesn't really mean you got anything going on at the same time. I tell people all the time, don't tell me what you're doing. Don't tell me what you're working on. Tell me what you're accomplishing and tell me what you're finishing. That's what I want you to start working on your businesses and with your team as well. Guys, I don't want to know collectively what we're working on. I want to know a deadline of when it's going to be finished. I want to know what are we achieving today? What are we achieving today? Because a, co a coach told me, my college coach told me, they said, Kyle, we're not trying to win a championship this year. We're trying to win every game. Because if we win every game, we'll be in the playoffs. If we win every game, we'll be in the, in the finals. If we win every game, what do, we, what do we do? We win the championship. If you focus that type of mindset in your organization, that's how you build winning teams. If you continue to empower your team, if you continue to, to, to make them inspire your team, motivate your team. That's how teams and players and employees will run through this wall for you head first. When you empower them to, to do their job effectively, when you lead them, not manage them, not micromanage them, that's how people will be able to truly contribute to the growth and the development and the scalable, um, the scalability of your business. And the last step is, really being able to, it's about really connectivity. I call it connectivity because you really want people that connect with your vision, with your dream and your ideas. I'm going to say this because this is truth. 
Developing a winning team is very challenging. It is. Bringing able to recruit talent is very challenging. That's why they have departments that just focus on recruiting. That's why colleges have departments that just focus on recruiting. Because there's so many people, but there's a small part of talent. There's probably 10% of talent out of the 100% of people. So we're all trying to fight for the same people. One of the things that I need you to do as a part of those early steps is I want you for homework to define your vision for your organization or that team. I want you to define your vision. What does an ideal business look like? So now when you're bringing on people, you can communicate, look, my name is Kyle King. The vision for this organization and why I brought you in here is maybe for this position, but I want to talk more about our organization. Our organization was founded because of this. The overall vision of our organization is this. Now, yes, we need these positions filled, but we're not just hiring skill sets. We're not just trying to fill bodies. We're trying to have people contribute to the vision and the growth of our organization for the people that we're going to impact in the future. Now your role, now you're making their role sound super amazing, like they're just gonna be Wonder Woman or Superman. It's not just bringing people in to, to, to be a cashier to flip burgers. People, we're trying to change the, the world. We're trying to change people's lives. So I need you to focus on aligning your vision, connecting people with your vision, with your dream and your ideas. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. That selfishness that we operate in is the reason that we don't develop winning teams. So these are the strategies to develop winning teams, really being able to hold people accountable, empower your team, have those clear expectations, have people that are problem solvers and break those barriers, empower them by allowing them to solve problems, empowering them, just asking them, you know, what would you do in this situation if this was your organization and having people that align with your vision and your homework tonight is figure out the pieces that you need. What do you do well and what do you not do well? Because those are the people that are going to help develop your team. So I am so excited. I hope you guys learned a lot and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.